Yes, that's right, college football season. At noon Eastern tomorrow, BYU will host Texas A&M in the Pigskin Classic. And isn't it great to hear football talk again? The subject this time, A&M's defensive line known as the Wrecking Crew. These big guys right here. We've got uh, good experience up front on our defense, and uh, uh, we're proud of the Wrecking Crew and the way they've played. We've got some uh, uh, concerns about our defense, got some new faces, and certainly playing against a team that, that uh, throws the ball like BYU will. Okay, so is BYU quarterback Steve Sarkeesian concerned about going against the wrecking crew? Uh, a little bit, but the bigger those guys are, the faster I run. So <laughs> I'm not too fast in a 40 time. When big guys chase me, I think I run a lot faster. Ah, yes, fall is just around the corner. I'm Darren Sutton. ABC Sports presents the 1996 college football season. Burger King College Football Today, where you get great taste and great value every day. Get your burgers worth. From the thrifty car rental pigskin classic in Provo, Utah, it's the Texas A&M Aggies from the Big 12 Conference and the Western Athletic Conference's BYU Cougars. The Wasatch Mountain Range, located about 45 miles south of Salt Lake City in Provo, Utah. The scene of one of the grandest settings in all of college football. Cougar Stadium, home of the BYU Cougars. And today, they will host the Texas A&M Aggies. The crowd will be over 55,000. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brent. I welcome my colleague, Dick Vermeil. Dick, nice to have you back. A lot of excitement this year in college football. Oh, the, a lot of excitement. And, Brent, I think it's going to follow the pattern sent last year. If you look at these graphics on the screen, more balls thrown last year, more passes complete, more yards gained, more points scored. Philosophically, college coaches moving to the passing game. We'll see more of it this year. Well, certainly one of our schools hopes to put more points on the board. That's the Aggies. They have their balance who transfer quarterback from Tennessee Brandon Stewart takes over today well he brings a lot to the ball game he really does because he's a very mobile guy he throws equally well on the run as he does um, a lot of their fans have traveled up from Texas for this game but now the BYU side of the story coach and it's always the same here comes that <laughs> passing offense Steve Sarkeesian is their starting quarterback again. He really wound up the season on a high note. Look at what he did against Fresno State, 31 of 34. You know what's amazing about it? He was a J.C. transfer, so that was his last game. It was his first year in the BYU offense. You can look for him to be better today, but maybe not recreate those kind of statistics. He hasn't faced the pass rush like he's going to see today. BYU hope to add some speed to their lineup here today. Take a look at these two youngsters, Brian McKenzie on the left a ballyhoo jc transfer and then ladies and gentlemen on the right is ronnie jenkins out of california in one high school game he rushed for 619 yards and he scored seven touchdowns i'm not making it up their coach is lavelle edwards he's down below now with jackaroo well coach for the first time in 17 years you didn't go to a ball game a bowl game last year what about this team this year I think this team will uh, earn a chance to go to a bowl game. It's going to be a good ball play. Early start for BYU football. What are your concerns about conditioning? Well, there'll be, there'll be no problem with conditioning. And, uh, the big problem is going to be the block A&M's rush. But uh, we'll just get out there and play it and go to work. Time to let the troops go. Thank you. Folks, you can help out here in Provo, Utah, and we are set to begin the longest college season in history. We'll open with BYU and Texas A&M. The Thrifty Car Rental Pigskin Classic on ABC Sports brought Bob Demick, the Vice President of Marketing at Thrifty Car Rental, with the first coin toss of the new season. Our Big Ten officiating crew, that was moments ago. BYU won the toss. Hotchman, number 37, a former soccer star out of the state of Washington, Mercer Island. And the college season is underway from the three-yard line. 
and the ball will be put in play at the 17 yard line it's out of Stephenville Texas and now this is his attack and he will bring it out and you will see our Chili's starting lineups the backs and receivers who he will be working with Albert Connell number 80 a year ago led the Aggies in catches yards TDs yards per catch He's the first all-conference receiver for the Aggies since 1986. Bernard is starting to running back. Stewart's going to throw on first down. Very elusive. He completes it to the 25-yard line. Forward defense here starting today. Shea Muirbrook is the man in the middle. He, of course, was all Western Athletic Conference a year ago. 6'1", 235. Questions about the defensive backfield, but they do have some ballyhooed J.C. transfer in that secondary. Omar Morgan, number one, keep an eye on him. And the Cougars, again, make a strong defensive stand led by Reed. Spencer Reed, the junior from Samoa, in to make the play that time. You can see that he teams with Brad Martin, and Muirbrook is there in the middle. So the linebackers make it three and out for the Aggies and Brandon Stewart and Shane Leckler into punt. He'll stand on the Aggie 10-yard line. James Dye, the leading punt return man in the nation. Back deep for the Cougars. He's Mr. Excitement in Provo. Got it at the 30-yard line. Looks for a crease not to be. Nailed at the 34-yard line. First down now for the Cougars. And they will come in with Steve Starkeesian. He's the senior quarterback out of Torrance, California. He will run the offense. Two tight ends who are very talented. There are the stats for Starkeesian, what he accomplished last year for BYU. Mealy and Lewis are his two very talented tight ends. They open with a three-pack slot receiver over to the left, that wide open attack. They throw the swing pass out of the backfield. Atuaya. Last play of the game. Third and short now for the Cougars. And Sarkeesian keeps it for the first down. Down we go to Jack O'Reilly's offensive unit. Picks up a first down on their first series. Quick drop by Sarkeesian. He's now two for two. Mealy breaks free. 30. Mealy down the sideline. Mealy inside the 10 and out of bounds at the five-yard line. One of their talented tight ends. See, that's the disadvantage of playing tight man-to-man. -man. They run a crossing pattern real tight to the line of scrimmage. They scrape and rub off, and Mealy, a great big tight end at 250 pounds, coming out there, running with the speed of a wide receiver. He catches... ...was going to be given a break, but he was not. They have been lethal inside the 20. They can throw, and BYU does. Diving touchdown. catch, and it's an opening touchdown for the Cougars. Sarkeesian from the five-yard line comes back to his other tight end, Chad Lewis. So we mentioned the key would be the tight ends, and they are. Five-pound, six-foot, six-inch tight end, Chad Lewis. A vertical leap of 38 inches. He showed you why he's such a... In the second half, he didn't, and his dad says that's when Brandon decided to leave school and transfer to his second choice. So that makes it first and five. Hardiman at the fullback spot. Takes the quick handoff on the quick hitter, hoping to surprise the Cougars. Yancey was ready. Pass actions in the game plan. Stewart is so mobile. This is where you don't want him out of containment. Second down and five. Set in the eye formation. They'll toss now to Parker behind Hardiman. Parker with the seam. Parker inside. Touchdown, Texas A&M. I think they can give him enough time. Third and eight now. We'll see what Sarkeesian and the Cougars come up with. Kalaluhi is number three in motion. Sarkeesian deep to Kalaluhi, and he overthrew him. He had him he had locked him. up that time against Williams on that corner, but he overthrew him. They came after him with his. He's got that one touchdown. You want to 
try to stay out of these third and longs because they are really tough to convert. Aaron Oliver is that slot receiver over on the left side. Stewart looks in that direction. The pocket holds, comes back into the middle to Oliver. Very important series. First and ten inside the Aggie 25 yard line. Sarkeesian is the quarterback for BYU. They fake it in round. They're going to throw in the hole. Middle. Incomplete. And Capo McGuire was hit in the end zone. But I don't even know that the ball was catchable to begin with. It was an interference rule. Now here is the Cougars with a second and ten. Ball on the 23-yard line. Sarkeesian flushed right. Safety foul. Puts the ball in the hands of the running back who had slipped out to the right-hand side that time. Is in coach at running back gets the call and he is met on a brilliant defensive play that time by time left in the first half. Kalaluhi in motion. Sarkeesian looks away from him. Back underneath wow. McGuire is nailed. The play dead immediately as soon as the helmet comes off the receiver. That to a new rule this year. As soon as that helmet went flying, the whistle sounds in college football. What a lick by Terry's of plays now for BYU. So McGuire holds on to the football. Lewis is the tight end to the left now. Sarkeesian will hand off right into the middle. Johnson going behind the left side. And he is behind Sarkeesian. Neely's over to the right. Fake McKenzie. Sarkeesian on the roll. Fires back. Touchdown! Neely, the tight end from the right side, working his way back to the middle for the Cougars. I think they're going ahead and kicking being down by eight. But I'll tell you, that's a difficult, difficult throw, Brent. Rolling left and throwing a crossing pattern coming from the tight end, the opposite side of the field. He starts in one direction. Now he'll come back, moving to the right side of your screen. Receiver coming from back inside him. Unbelievable throw and a nice catch. That is very difficult to throw, especially with a man in your face. Hutchman nails the extra point. The turnover on the punt, the difference, and BYU climbs back into this game. Third and nine. Stewart. Parker on the screen, short of the first down. Aggies punt. Eddie Keel did a nice job, Brent, of reading the screen. First down and ten. Cougars come up trailing Texas A&M 20 to 13 and Jenkins in the backfield gets his first carry from scrimmage to the 27 yard line. I think overall for Sarkeesian to the Cougars. They fake the draw. Mealy again at the. Coming after him. Fake the draw again. Oh, great catch by Lewis. And he Real gets cover. the first down. Line. There's Chad, sits down now. Very good at getting off the line. Stays in the block this time. Sarkeesian under pressure. And nimbly gets away and is whacked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Cody bring James Dye on. He's wide left. Aggies are locked up one-on-one. -on -one. Bump and run. Sarkeesian looks in that direction. Gonna go long. Watch Dye. Got him Dye at the 34-yard line. They were four across the board in that coverage. He read the coverage perfectly. It's one-on-one. -on -one. The corner has no help inside with the release of the inside receivers like they're playing. He throws it right on the money. And, they and Walker. That's why he went down in a heap. First and 25. Sarkeesian. Lewis. Battling to the 40-yard line. See, they try to get that rub off with the tight end coming inside out, the wide receiver coming down, tight man and member coverage on that outside man. They try to scrape those defenders off, bump into each other, and clear it out. That tight end didn't bump them off, but the defender had to bow around a white jersey to get there, so he got there late. Dick, is your feeling that the Aggies will have to blitz a little bit more than they have? More than they want to, because they haven't gotten the pressure without the blitz. Second down and 16 for the Cougars in Sarkeesian. Ball at the Aggie 41-yard line. 
Now they got a five down lineman situation, Brent. They put a linebacker down, so you can't help anybody. So Keyshane, and he puts it into the hands of K.O. Kealuhi. First down, Cougars. And half Irish. He played at El Camino Junior College. He's hit his last eight passes here against Texas A&M. For the day, Sarkeesian is 14 of 20 for 169 yards, and he is driving the Cougars again inside the 15-yard line. The Texas A&M defense leaves the Cougars now with a second and 11. Sarkeesian rolls right, throws now, and this is Mealy banging again to the 10-yard line, so he picks up. <laughs> Down and five. You wore the Cougars. Back comes Sarkeesian. End zone, touchdown. BYU, he's got McGuire. A person when he has no help inside. I'm surprised they were playing him outside and let him get inside so easily. They must be playing that way because they're afraid of crossing patterns and they want to chase the crossing pattern from the outside in. Didn't work that time. Nine-year-old Joe Paterno still going strong. One of the national championships he won was quarterback by our colleague Todd Blackledge. Todd went back to Penn State and sat down with his former coach, the legend. Think about making four yards. Don't worry about anything, but let it all hang out. I may coach another eight, ten years. I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun. Well, Coach, first of all, I want to tell you, I, I made sure I got my hair cut before we did this interview <laughs> because I didn't want you to give me a hard time about my hair being too long. I think it looks good. Then, <laughs> what's different? I mean, we'll talk about a couple things, but what's different about players today? So I don't think players are much different. I think the environment is so different. For instance, preseason practice. Now, here's the things I have. I have a seminar for agents. I have an FBI guy come in and talk about gambling. I have a, 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 a person come in and talk about alcohol abuse. And I have somebody talk about date rape. I mean, four different se seminars I have to have because I want to make sure they understand what's all about the agents. I want to make sure they understand, you know, what society expects from them in different ways. I, and I have a fifth one, communication seminar. We have some newspaper guys sit down and tell, you know, how to handle the press and those things. I mean, you, you're really fighting the environment. And I think the kids basically are pretty much the same. Can you pinpoint one thing that you would say is maybe the most pressing problem facing college football today or not? Well, the one that's going to be is the hardest one for the, us to handle is the agents. I think it's very unfair to hold a school or a coach accountable for a kid who happens to sign for a few bucks by any. I, I just don't know how you can keep track of that. But I tell you, I, I just I think that's our next big challenge. Our big challenge is to, is to, to do that and to make sure the agents don't have a, a, an undue influence on decisions to leave college early, that you know, the agent doesn't sell a kid, hey, you're gonna come out as a second round pick or a first round pick when, when the coach really knows he's a fifth or a sixth or marginal case. I mean, those kinds of things. But there, there's a group of people out there that are really trying to seduce our athletes and, and the, the agents lead the pack. Sounds like to me, Joe, that you believe in your heart that this is the best team in the country. Well, I... Well, I... Well, I think I'd have to agree with them. <laughs> you've won two national championships, but you've also had four other teams that finished undefeated, won their bowl games, and, and didn't get voted in the national championship. Has that been... Uh, I don't know, I don't want to say a thorn in your side, but has it been a frustration for you in your tenure here? I'd say I, I, it bothers me. It bothers me because of them. I could care less whether I got, you know, five national championships, two. It doesn't make any difference to me. I'm not that, I'm not on an ego trip, but it, I, it does bother me those kids did not get the recognition they should have. 
it's your fourth year coming up in the Big Ten. Um, has it been what you expected it? I mean, has it been everything that you wanted it to be moving into the Big Ten? I think it's been, yeah, Todd, I think it, it, the Big Ten's been a great thing for this university. Not just football, but the whole university. It's given us benchmarks for our library and for our sociology department and our engineering school and all those kinds of things. And the football is really, it's much more competitive than we've had. You know, we used to, you know, we played some teams in the East, never beat us in 30 years. I think we were 112 or 118 and, and 10 against a group of teams we played here. That's never going to happen in the Big Ten. It's too tough. The kickoff classic at the Meadowlands. Nice having them make the long road trip in to play, though, huh? Oh, that's... that's Setback behind Lewis. Touchdown. Bring him down. They blew the coverage. was the play that drew them to within one. <laughs> they blew the coverage. They ended up with three guys covering one and nobody covering the wide receiver. They used motion. They blew it. Stewart sets the screen. First down, A&M. Must get inside the Cougar 30. Rolls right side. On the run, Good incomplete. Defense. Connell defended by Morgan. Morgan climbed all over him. Excellent. Tight, tight coverage. You can't. Texas A&M leading 27-26. Cougars with the ball. Coming out from their own 20-yard line. Senior quarterback Steve Sarkeesian has been red hot here of late. Boy, there are some great, loyal, longtime fans of this Cougar football program. McKenzie, the J.C. transfer. That's Bernard Mitchell holding on. Speak Bothering him. They ran K all the way across the formation of motion. You remember before, they blew the coverage and allowed the man in motion guy uh, to screw up the coverage and a post pattern to be thrown. This time, they come across, loosen up the coverage. Anticipate more use of wide receiver motion. It's working. 295 yards, 16 straight completions for Sarkeesian. 16 in a row. On He's going to go now to see if he can make it 17. On the move, he's got it. Right back to KO on the left sideline. He's out of bounds. Out of bounds. He's been bothering him. They come in motion. That's Lewis slipping out. Sarkeesian holding up. Middle. Bad throw. On the turnover, and Rich Cody is free at midfield. Cody, the son of the former Bear, barges his way to the 21-yard line. Hooker on a cutback to the six, and it is. on that. I'm curious as to why ain't it but come back with that play action stuff and he get over the middle because I mean it is there third down and goal for Brandon Stewart and the Aggies hit Hardeman for the touchdown rule change well we'll wait and see Cougars have got the ball they need a touchdown and a two to tie it now Sarkeesian Back in the pocket, slips the rush, fires complete, Walker brings down the receiver and the other, and Horn has loosened up. No bump and run on the left side. Sarkeesian got it on the other side. Oh, what a catch at the 10-yard line by Cahoon. Now that puts the slot man on the safety man-to-man, -man, and he went down and hooked up, and they ran the post pattern in behind him. Very well executed. Did a nice job of throwing it. Good protection. To the uh, right side of your screen, he throws it right down the hole. There's no safety there because they're in man across the board. The slot man hooked up, tied up the coverage in there. There he is. Time throw, too. Now from the 13, Coach. Second down. Sarkeesian has thrown for 385 yards. <laughs> 
They press on the right. Sarkeesian. Up the middle. On the release. Incomplete at diving Kalaluhi. And he is complaining. So it is third down. again. Right side. Touchdown BYU. And it was James Dye, the speedster. They're just they're making all kinds of mistakes covering those slot uh, patterns. Right? Now they need the two to tie it. Coach, obviously they need the two to draw even here with 11.53 to go. You know, and they have such a great inside short passing game. Last year they were two for five in this situation in two, uh, converting two-point conversions. KO in motion. The tight ends are there. Backs flare. the play that pulled BYU back in it to speedster James Dye then the two point conversion you know he was dizzy no question but he got a great block too also by big tight end Etula Mealy he peels back right here this gets him in the end zone regardless of the running backs effort if he doesn't get that block he doesn't get the two points Deep pitch. Bottled by Bernard. He won't get it. This moment right now has great feeling in Provo, Utah. The thrifty car rental pigskin classic on ABC Sports brought to you by eight points on the board here in Cougarville, Provo, Utah. 34 all, 10-29 left in regulation. Different lineup mechanic that time. They came out of the huddle in two groups. Sarkeesian rolling, moving the pocket, comes back wide open in the middle is McGuire in a foot race to the 30, 25, still going down at the 13 yard line. Brent, that's the first time they've used that huddle mechanic. The offensive line came out, got set, and the rest of the backs and receivers stayed in the huddle and then broke late, sprinted out, lined up, and ran the play. Clever, I have. He'll be cleared to play. Third and eight. Incomplete as the corner comes up hard. McTire. Sarkeesian from the 42-yard line. And again, he was hit on the release and the ball of 11. <laughs> 450 yards. Oh, 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 my gosh. Second down now and 10. Sarkeesian. And he's got Lewis. At midfield, he couldn't get his balance and get squared up. Down. If BYU likes it or loves it as well. We're tied at 34 right now. Third and after two. Him. And he slips away, comes free on the throw, incomplete. See, they covered all five offensive linemen in the field goal kickers. Coming down inside at 225 now on second down. Here's Bernard, hole is plugged to the 29-yard line. And this will be third down up one. and 10. The ball back at the Cougar 34-yard line on this third down. Stewart rolls to the left. Fires incomplete. And it is fourth down. Two-yard attempt for Kyle Bryant. Got it. 
three for three, Kyle Bryant, who hit five against Michigan in the Alamo Bowl, now puts the Aggies up by three. Lavelle Edwards offense with a minute 27 and two timeouts to work with. Sarkeesian ready, down three. And with this drill in mind, they back it up into the shotgun look. They show a five-man rush and come with it. That's all singled up there now. Sideline, and he works it to perfection for a first down. And the quarterback of BYU, Chevrolet donates $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. First and ten. Shotgun. Sticking right with it on their two-minute drill, giving them a little more time to hide the defense. In the middle, wide open. They hit KO across midfield to the 45. Kealaluhi and the Cougars now with a life. Those deep crossing patterns take so much time. They were in a zone. They just kept coming, but no pass rush. Well, they show a regular rush. Deep ball. Touchdown. BYU leads. Levi Kealaluhi, the KO punch. Sixth touchdown pass of the day for Steve Sarkisian. The extra point is good. Hutchman adds it and makes it a four-point BYU lead. That would take Bryant and a field goal out of the game. The Aggies must go the hard way now with a minute three left. Here they are, one and one. Number 26, Andre Williams looking at the receiver. They're going down. To the right side of your screen, he looks back, he can't make the play, he got beat on the step, the ball was thrown perfectly, can't do it any better, and is he excited. Another look here to the left side of your screen, a good little change of pace initially in the stem, not bursting full speed, slowed the corner down, then he burst, a little more steam left in his sprint, he gets in the end zone for six points. Wacky West. <laughs> One timeout left. A minute and three is in score. A good runner. Needs the sideline. Had to do that. Got it. Wanted the first down, and then he realized with only one timeout, he had to reach that sideline, which... Playing loose zone coverage right now. Rushing four. Check Underneath, down. in the middle, and didn't get the first down. Can't stop it with a first down. They came to Hardeman out of the backfield. Martin was the defender. The clock continuing to run. They don't want to use that timeout if they can avoid it. He can always stop it by slamming it down, but Stewart appears to have one call. He does. Second and short. Fires. It'll stop now as soon as Connell gets out of bounds. First down. Coverage. First down from the 46 of the Aggies. Stewart back to the middle. It is complete. Into the 34. Clock will stop on the first down at 18 seconds. Still plenty of time for the Aggies. He did a nice job of sliding away that time from the rush, maintaining concentration downfield and locating that receiver. They want to tighten up that zone coverage now. You have to be impressed with how confidently Stewart is driving this team. He just looked at his wristband and called for oh! Sweet, sweet revenge in Provo. It appeared he 
he was moving away from Rush with the ball in his hand, not two hands on the ball. He wanted to be able to throw the ball quickly, so he has it out and away from his body, not protecting the ball with both hands. To the right side of your screen, see he's got one hand on the ball, and it just slips right out of his hand as he steps up forward. Darren Yancey, number 97 from Blackfoot, Idaho, wraps it up. Put it in a record book, ladies and gentlemen. This one is for every Cougar fan who remembers what happened to Detmer in the Holiday Bowl. It was a wonderful college football game and a marvelous way to open up the longest season in history. Now we go to Jackaroo. Well, Coach, you said you wanted to keep it close. You really kept it close. Congratulations. This is certainly not the score I would have predicted. I, I'm so proud of the guys, the way they hung in there. They just kept coming back and playing hard and doing what they had to do. It's just one of the great victories we've had here. Well, Brent, it's Bedlam down here. Let's go back to you. Jack, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to College Football 96. BYU wins it on this touchdown pass. Keo Laluhi hauls it in. And the Cougars win it 41-30. History is officially underway. The kickoff classic goes tomorrow. It's the pigskin classic that got us going. What an opening act it was. At the controls for Texas A&M, Brandon Stewart, the Tennessee transfer, escaping from behind the shadow of Peyton Manning. Steve Sarkeesian start, returns at quarterback for Brigham Young. Both men turning in stellar afternoons. The seventh annual pigskin classic, a beautiful day in Provo, Utah. Second quarter, 13-6 A&M. Aggies looking to put it away early. Brandon Stewart off and running to wide receiver Aaron Oliver, who's looking outside, and he'll go 57 yards for the score. It is 20 to 6 A&M. But BYU would battle back Sarkeesian to tight end Etula Mealy. The juggling act comes down with it. Cougars down seven. They would strike again just before the half. Sarkeesian to a diving Kaipo McGuire. Wow, the 10-yard touchdown. It is 20-20 at the half. In the third, A&M's turn to respond. Eric Bernard, one move, and he's got nothing but daylight. 40 yards for the score, 27-20. A&M retake the lead, but Sarkeesian had more left. Up top to a wide open. You don't get any more wide open than that. McGuire, 51 yards. It's six. It's a one-point lead after the missed extra point. Then in the fourth, after an A&M touchdown, BYU, Sarkeesian, the James Dye, 12 yards plus the two-point conversion, 34 all. Late A&M up three, just over a minute left, Sarkeesian, K-O-K-U-L-A-U-B-I. You got it. Okay, says K.O. That's the game winner, a thriller on opening day. The Aggies lose their first of eight openers under R.C. Slocum. Stewart's debut goes down as a loss despite completing 20 of 28 for 232 yards and two touchdowns. This, some Cougar revenge for a 65-14 to A&M route of BYU in the 1990 Holiday Bowl. I think it just lets the country know what kind of a team we really have, a team that we knew we had, and now people are finding out about us. We're not a secret anymore. Oh, man, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm sure I would, on my age, if I can stand all this excitement, but I'll take the chances. <laughs> yeah. We came in here to play a, a very good football team. It really was about what we expected. We knew it would be a tough contest coming up here, playing them at home. They've got an experienced quarterback coming back, and uh, we've got, uh, we had an inexperienced secondary. That was my concern. What a day for Steve Sarkeesian. He opens his season with a career-best performance, throwing for six touchdowns. He picked apart the Aggie secondary, completing a career-best 33 of 41 for 536 yards. Despite the gaudy totals, it's just the ninth-best passing game.